subject that's kind of been taboo. I don't know if you should talk about it, if you shouldn't talk about it. But I'm going to do a series on it. It's going to be the first part of probably four episodes of this series. And I'm going to talk about steroids. No one ever wants to seem to admit it, to discuss it, to tell the right truth about it. And I think it's time it needs to be told. Steroids gets a bad rap. Every time you hear the news that a bodybuilder died or a wrestler died, they say, oh, he died of steroids. Well, that's the farthest thing from the truth you'll ever want to hear. First of all, I did some research. And I would say over the past 40 years, if you checked hospitals around the world and asked how many people died of steroids, you'd come up with a zero because it didn't kill anybody. Those who took steroids in pro wrestling, those who took steroids in bodybuilding, took other medications, took other street drugs, took diuretics, took speed, took coke, you name it, they took it. Those were the things that killed them. Steroid is an anabolic drug that builds tissue. It was used in World War I and World War II for people who were shot, injured in battle to rehabilitate their muscle, their well-being, their mind, their skin, and it helped everything come back to natural. Anything in abuse or overdone should, yeah, or could kill you. Of course. You could take too many, much aspirin. Some girl that was a fitness model died of drinking too much water a couple of years ago. So, yeah, anything can kill you. And steroids could, too, if you take too much of them. Of course. Anything. But that wasn't the main reason these guys died, and the news gets a hold of it, and they just like to publicize the hell out of it. Bush had said one thing when he was in office, there's two things I want to stop, it's the war and steroids. Like, why did it matter to him? Why does it matter if somebody wants a 20-inch arm or a 58-inch chest? Why, is that going to be harmful? It's your own choice, whatever you choose to do, whatever you choose to take, however you choose to train. Nobody should dictate what you can and what you cannot do. Years ago, they were legal. Nobody had a problem, but the underground market got big and nobody was making money and the government stepped in and said, hey, we got to make money off these steroids. Everybody else is, so let's put a ban on it and we'll arrest people that have them. We'll make them pay dearly. Well, that's where a lot of that comes from. There's so much to touch on here that I can't do it all in one episode, so I'm just going to break the ground a little bit. Back in the late 50s, I started training, probably, I started training in 1959. 1960, Somebody told me about a famous bodybuilder that was taking Dianabol. I don't want to mention his name or incriminate him, but we knew that he was, and he was awesome. And what's, what's Dianabol? I never heard of it. Well, it's a little pill that makes your muscle grow, a little blue pill made by SIBA. So I checked around. I was living in a small town at the time, like you people know, and I had a friend who worked at the pharmacy, and I said, take a look on the shelf and see if you can find me a bottle of Dianabol. Well, sure enough, he did. <laughs> and he gave it to me, 100 tablets. I said, oh, man, i got to try this. I was 17 years old. I took one a day, two a day, and I went to three a day. And I grew, and I got strong, and I got thick, and I was pumped all the time. And I said, man, this stuff is awesome. I, it was really working for me. And I used the bottle, and I went off, and I lost some weight, and I lost some water. I didn't have the drive I did when I was on it. But that was okay. I mean, I experimented, and it worked. Uh, my diet wasn't 100% because I didn't know about diet then. I didn't know what I was supposed to eat. You know, I figured I'd eat anything. Just take Dianabol and grow. Well, that's not the case because in many people that are young, your body is already producing testosterone. I didn't need it at 17. I need it now at 66. And since it is producing it, you're really going to, what's going to happen, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tell your body to shut down what it already is producing, and at some point you won't produce it anymore. So you have to be careful how you do something like that. However, it did do what it was supposed to do. And back then, if I was to buy it, it was $8 a hundred. And all I needed was a prescription from the doctor who readily would give it to me because he saw nothing harmful in it. Well, I took that for a while, and then I moved down to L.A. and started training, and I heard about other things like Winstrol, which they said they give to babies, and it was a little pink pill. And I took the Winstrol, and it didn't hold the water like the D-ball did, but it made me extremely cut, and it made my skin like silk, and it really worked well. And I thought I could take the two, one for size and one for cuts, and which I did. I incorporated both. And it seemed to do the job. And even back then, I think 100 Winstrol was like 12 bucks. You know, maybe not even that. Easy to get. Well, that was my first introduction to steroids. Needles, no. Didn't do any shots. Didn't even know of shots at that time. But that was pretty much what was around. And uh, when I started tightening up my diet and dropping the carbs down, it worked even better. 
because I was losing body fat and my muscles were staying full and they were staying round and they were staying where I wanted them to. Now, a lot of the guys back then took them and there wasn't much around other than a, a few drugs. But there are so many people in the gyms, even then and now, and you know they're on something, and you ask them, oh, no, this is all natural. You know, nobody can gain 20 pounds of muscle in a month and tell you it's natural. It's impossible. And normally a lot of it's water, a lot of it's bloat. Now, I don't advocate the use of using them. I would never tell young kids, go take steroids. No, absolutely not. You don't need it. I wouldn't tell anybody to take it. That's your choice. But I do know from my experiences that it works, it does have its downside. It does have its mood swings. It affects everybody different. Some people break out with acne really bad. Some people get temper tantrums. Some people lose their sex drive. Some people increase their sex drive. It all depends on your body chemistry. But steroids have been around for a long, long time. I mean, this is nothing new to anybody. It was first used in weightlifting and bodybuilding, and then it branched off later. Now you hear it in baseball and football and basketball and all other sports. And these guys with the baseball who are being busted for it, I think it's wrong because it's not going to make them throw a ball any straighter or hit it any straighter. It might increase their strength a little bit. But we all take something. We all take food additives. We all take supplements. We all take something to extrude. We all put nitric oxide in the car to make the car run faster. In drag races, they do everything they can to get the, the edge. This is part of life. This is part of what the world is. And it's just how it is. And if you take it off the market and make it illegal, there'll be more on the market illegally. The problem with the illegal stuff is a lot of it's fake. A lot of it's just oil. A lot of it's blank pills. And you'll pay a lot of money for them, and they don't work. And so you'll take more, and they don't work. And you'll take more, and they don't work. And you don't know who's making it. You don't know the quality control. You don't know what's going into it. You don't know if it's, it's even, um, uh, well, you know it's not real. But you don't know if it's even as far as being clean or what kind of bacteria got into it or where it was made in somebody's garage. And you're putting stuff into your body that could make you very, very, very sick because of all the outside elements that are enter into it. So in that case, you've got to be careful what you get and where you get it. Now, I've found over the years that as I grow older, my body produces less testosterone. And so if I take an added bit, I feel much stronger, and it really helps me to train harder. There's no question about it. So I take it in moderation. Now, there's Winstrol, there's Dianabol, there's Parabone, there's Primabolin, there's Equipoise, there's Deca. There's all different types of things we'll be able to get into in different parts of these episodes and let you know what they're all about. But... I'm only limited to 8 minutes, 10 minutes on these because of YouTube, and so I have to cut them short. But I want you to know that steroids are out there. If you choose to take them, that's your choice. Be sure you find a good person that you know that you can count on that has them uh, because you don't want to buy bogus stuff. And I want to get into more about this later because I want to talk about what each one does. For example, Diana Ball will may gain muscle, but it will retain water. So the more you take, the more water you're going to gain. And then when you go off, you'll lose 20 pounds of water and you'll lose everything. You say, my God, I lost all my muscle. So the key to everything is moderation. The key is to take it a little bit and eat right, train hard, and let it go like that. But like I said, don't advocate the use of it. That's your own discretion. So I will get into this. I will tell you that way back in Gold's Gym in the late 69, 70s that everybody was on them. I got my supplies from some of the greatest names you'll ever know of. I'm not naming anybody, but I got them from them. And everybody today who you see in magazines that's really big and really ripped and really full of muscle with 21, 22 inch arms, there's no way that you can get that naturally. There is no way. I don't care what the articles say, it's not true. And even the heavy weights you see them lifting in there, yeah, a lot of guys are really strong, but a lot of the weights are in the pictures to show you like they're lifting, and they're really not. I mean, it's just for the show, for the, for the actual photograph. So stay tuned for part two and on because I'm going to elaborate. I might bring a guest in to talk about it. But I want you to know I'm going to start on the subject and I'm going to give you the deep information, the truth information, and what it's all about. And you'll be happy to know that the, there's a good side, a bad side, and an ugly side, just like the movie. Steroids, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Stay tuned. <laughs>